hands. His ankle there, nice, nice kick. kick. He comes Jordan, Jordan back. come back with those hands again. Hey, yo, it's your boy Shane here. Before we start today's episode, we have a new sponsor on board. So get me behind the Combat Chat podcast now is Manscaped, who are the best in the world for men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, is here. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free shipping worldwide with the code COMBATCHAT, all one word. If my maths correct, that's about 8 million balls. <laughs> Okay, fellas, let's be honest. There's always that story of us trying to trim the hedges, mow the lawn when the when the younger days, but even probably now, because, like, you know, we don't want anything scraggly down here. We don't want our budgie smugglers to look, look like they're tarantula smugglers, okay? We've got to keep it fresh, okay? And this is where the the lawnmower 4.0 comes in phase, place. And it's, I've used it myself. And it's great. Like, you know, I've got enough of my good things to say about it, actually. So, like, you know, I'm going to kind of keep everything pristine from now on because man escapes on board. And it doesn't stop there. You also got the weed whacker, which is like good for the nose hairs, the ears hairs. You also have the, the ball deodorant, the ball toner. So, after you smooth it and kind of moisturize some of them, they're going to be smooth as eggs. <laughs> Who doesn't want to touch them after that? For real. So in saying that, it's time to take care of yourself. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code COMBATCHAT. All one word. So remember, to get 20% off, free worldwide shipping, put in COMBATCHAT in at manscaped.com. And remember, unlock your confidence and always use the right tools with the job with Manscaped. Hey, yo, your boys are back. How are you? I'm pretty good. It's been a busy couple of weeks. It has, eh? Yeah. Congrats on your win. Thank you. Yeah, we, 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 as this show is going to go down, it's going to be a big, big breakdown show. But yeah, uh, it's been a lot happening. It has. And like, um, yeah, we actually have to do the catch-up game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll a lot to talk it. about. But we, we, uh, we didn't forget any of the shows. we just been... <laughs> Had a lot on. Yeah, yeah. Lots on, lots on. Um, how about uh, start off with a little bit of international news that's happening in the, uh, Thailand? Mm, yeah, I've been following this week uh, Rajadam Nern Stadium uh, in conjunction with GSV, Global Sports Ventures, their media partner. I've been announcing uh, a bunch of new upgrades to kind of how they deliver Muay Thai at the stadium, sort of modernising. Uh, it looks pretty sick. I'm I'm pretty on board with it. I'm I'm interested to see what the reception to this is from from the old heads of Muay Thai because they are I think Rajasthan then a lot of the talk in Thailand recently has been the move towards this kind of entertainment format and there was for a very long time that hard split if you had your Max Muay Thai Super Champ style and then you had the the traditional stadium style and they were almost it got to the point where these days they're almost like two different sports but as you see like one championship gaining popularity which is really that's the highest that's the pinnacle of the entertainment format of Muay Thai really uh, right down to little gloves you've seen the stadiums have been starting to kind of play ball on that side of thing and do things a little bit differently. Lumpini being the biggest one was met with mixed reviews. Like they do a lot of really different stuff. They have MMA at Lumpini Stadium now. A lot of three round fights and it's really designed and styled differently. You've got a big entrance ramp. They've modernized the stadium and Rajanam Nern seems to be doing now. It's interesting because I think that really created a split between you had Lumpini doing the modern thing and it's not really Lumpini anyway, as we know. It's it's new Lumpini in name, but the old Lumpini Stadium has been gone for ages now. Long time. Eight or nine years, yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas Raja Dumnern was that, you know, the 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 mecca of Muay Thai, the, the classic traditional, but they've refurbished it. Looks really different. Looks beautiful, actually. Mm. Very modern, new logos, new designs. It's almost unrecognisable, actually. It doesn't even look like Raja Dumnern yeah. anymore. And they've announced the Raja Dumnern World Series, which is really going to do a modern spin. On Thai boxing, it's going to be a tournament format. Uh, they've announced the first weight classes that they're going to go forward with, uh, as well as the first female fights at Raja. Wow. So this is it's all big. It's big, yeah. It's just, I guess it opens up the platform for 
more viewership, uh, yeah. more participation from women. Mm. But this is going to be like, a, there's still going to be five round fights. There's going to be like, so this is like a separate own thing. Yeah, to the very best of my knowledge, like RWS, the Raja World Series, is just going to be like a, a promotional or a, a, a tournament running within Raja, but standard weekly programming will remain the same. So yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I like the look of it. It is very modern. Uh, it's going to I, I hope it's accessible because I have noticed as well a lot of the social media for Raja these days is it's like split between Thai and English which is really really good you can follow the news they profile the fighters that are coming up in English and their last sort of 10 fights recent form and I think that's a barrier to a lot of people watching Muay Thai is just not being able to keep up with it now, I've been really loving the fights at Raja recently uh, there was really good uh, Ferrari for Petit Tong this week that was sick. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes of it. Also, w- what I like is that in the past, it's been really difficult for foreigners to crack. this. not impossible. Of course, we've seen notable examples of it, but it's been really hard for foreigners to kind of get a foot in the door on the stadiums. But this is really putting an emphasis on getting top-end foreigners to mix with high-end ties in these tournaments. So, it's going to be real a real international kind of format. So I, I like that. I think it'll make for really good fights. And yeah, three rounds. I think no drawn rounds also. Yeah, no 10-10s, I, I think. No 10-10s. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one thing like, uh, I've spoken heaps before. Like I don't love, I love all fights actually. Uh, but I prefer five round fights. That's like one of the kind of sadder things for me personally about, modern Muay Thai is there seems to be such a move towards three round fights and especially in the stadiums it's it that's a different game so I hope we still see a lot of five round stadium style Muay Thai but I like the idea of tournaments with three rounds especially as the guys are going to back them up mm-hmm. pretty quickly I think it'll be cool yeah yeah I think it's a it's a good step like yeah, I'll, go. I'll be very interested to see when it, when it gets up and running, and then and also the the people have been in it as well, seeing that like yeah, it is open to internationals as well. Yeah, uh, I've seen um a, a few announcements like the the full bracket for a couple of them have come out, um, but they've been kind of just announcing names that are going to be in, and there's some big names like I saw Yodri Char mm. announced this morning, so these going to be serious, yeah. high end tournaments. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's going to be cool. I, I mean, like. I'm trying to think what, whether I would be put in the bucket of like the traditionalists. I don't know where you'd put, I don't know where you'd put me. (laughs) But I'm super open to, especially, you know, like coming out of the the last couple of years have been really hard for Thailand Muay Thai. Uh, I think if there ever was a time to refresh things a little bit and try to get people back into the stadiums and get eyes on the stadiums, it's, it's now. So I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, I'm an optimist. Yes, so. <laughs> Got to be. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think when it comes to Muay Thai, I think one of the problems is, like, people almost not wanting the sport to grow mm. because they want to keep it. And I understand adhering to tradition, I do. But I also think you have to be open to the idea of innovating yeah. things a little bit. So You've know, you got to keep, keep people coming into the sport. And really, like, if everyone wants to go to one championship, if that's the pinnacle, we need an engine room to get there. Like, you can't have people coming up, you know, in this exclusively in that kind of stadium style and then expecting them to readjust yeah. to, to the international format. That's that's really difficult. I think you'll see better quality. It's, it's like you talked about before. It's like it's pretty much two separate things. Completely different. Completely different. So I think, like, a, yeah, anything that kind of makes stadium with time more accessible, He's good. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Now I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to go back to Raja. Yeah. Cannot wait. I haven't been there for years. Mm-hmm. The last time I was there was probably the last birthday show that had a crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a wicked lineup. I saw some sick fights. Um, yeah, I can't wait to go back to Raja. And now it's, it's different. It looks really cool. I, I think like from what I can see, I, I haven't seen it super full recently and I think internationals are still just starting to trickle back in and that's a big part of the crowds at Raja is people yeah. on holiday and stuff plus the gamblers but hopefully this is something that can establish a bit more fanfare within because that's been falling off a lot in recent years has been actual Thai boxing fans in Thailand like there's people that are 
associated with the business of the sport, <laughs> like the gambling, and there's fighters and stuff, but there's not like heaps of Thai punters packing the stadiums the way they used to. So hopefully this is something that can kind of reignite, reignite a bit of interest yeah. in the national sport over there. That's it. It's like it's it sounds like it's on the right direction though. Yeah, I like it. I'm really ke- and I'm keen to see what our options are going to be for watching it, mm. YouTube or. Yeah, just something to help people. I, and I think I think the sport will grow a lot if you expose more people in the Western world to the elite level of it. And I think we might do a better job of that if we kind of play the international game a little bit with the shows that are getting put on. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's been cool to follow this news. It, I think this is going to be a big... I think the Muay Thai in Thailand is about to look really different. I think when we talk about it a year from today... With all of these movements from what's already kind of underway at Lumpini, now Raja Dumnan following suit, I think it's, yeah, it's going to be a really different. I, I'm excited, like I said, I'm really excited to go back because I think Muay Thai in general is going to look really different the next time I go there. Nice. Cool. Big things. Mm. Right. So let's go into some of our breakdowns here. So a couple of weeks ago, Simon the Sydney 21 happened. And it was a couple of weeks too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, of course. I would never complain. I'm not complaining, but... Jeez. Like, I think the officials check-in was 9.30 in the morning. It was a big day. I left almost 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Just <laughs> catch the Perth show. So yeah. <laughs> oh, it was such a long day. I don't know if it... I think it went a little bit longer than... Yeah, I think right there was a lot of fights. I loved every second of it, of course. But yeah, it's just yeah, it's just so long with the development day, and then you then you got to wait a bit, and then you got the pro am card afterwards. Because like when it comes to like when I do, I just say yes to doing too much, and I'm going to keep doing it. So it's not even. Worth it. <laughs> but when you have to really be engaged from the first development day fight all the way to the very last fight, like I don't think there's a lot of roles that have to do that. <laughs> like <laughs> most people like fight on the development day or and then they go home yes. or maybe they stay for, and then it's almost like it's like three nights mm-hmm. where when you've got a role to play in every night it becomes really long right, so especially if you're going to do officiating and then you're going to jump in the mm. commentary booth like yourself yeah, <laughs> yeah. to be honest I was talking to Andrew about this like it, it wasn't my best work as a commentator uh, yeah I, uh, hmm. I'm not I, I haven't gone back and Listen to heaps of it, but I, I just wasn't, I don't know. Sometimes like, I think the nights that I've done the best work and people's, uh, the nights where I felt like it was the best, in my opinion, doesn't really matter. It's the listener's opinion. Like it came really easily. Yeah. I think if you're thinking about it, you're probably not doing that well. Cause I remember just sort of sitting there like, I'm not doing a good job. And that makes it worse. Yeah. Like I, I found it <laughs> quite hard and uh, I got tired. Like I was, mm-hmm. it's a difficult, that's the thing with trying to wear a lot of hats mm. is that like, you know, I was fighting yeah. then following weekend. So there's like, I'm, I'm probably, a lot of things happen. yeah, I'm probably not at my sharpest. I'm losing weight and stuff like that. And, you know, we're trying to shift gears between and having teammates fighting and stuff as well. There's a lot going on. And I just remember thinking like, oh, this is not like, and I would say something and just be like, oh, that's not good. That's not <laughs> good. Yeah, like a, like an open mic going fucking bombing. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> like I was bombing badly. And like, I got some messages from people like, I don't like it when I'm commentating, especially when it's a longer form kind of amateur. Mm-hmm. People that message me during, yeah, because I like to engage with the people that yeah, are watching. Nice. And I mean, I feel like people weren't like, "Well, this sucks." <laughs> I mean, they probably wouldn't anyway. But <laughs> They're just sending food. <laughs> but the the engagement I got from people mm. was the same as it usually is. Yeah. So, like, hopefully, um, I guess you're just like a lot more cognizant of your own yeah, businesses. and it's it's difficult as well when. There's a lot of amateur fights kind of before the pros. Like I think I've spoken before about how I like make a point of commentating differently for the amateurs as I do for the pros because it's almost, there's a couple of elements to that. Like um, uh, the pros, I think you need to format it a little bit more. Like it needs to be a little bit more of an informed commentary like you really need to kind of approach it like you know who the guys are whereas the amateurs you don't know anyone's styles that intricately and just kind of taking it as it comes i suppose 
But like, I am always conscious of like when there's a lot of amateur fights before the pro fights. I'm like, am I going to have any like energy left? Mm. When, like, that's my biggest worry when I'm commentating is that by the time you get to the main event or the fight that the most people tune in for, you're kind of just spent. Mm. Like that's something that I'm learning to manage and that's a big part of that is not overanalyzing the amateur fights and just taking them as they are. Because I almost think as well, like I don't want to – really pull apart an amateur fight for the sake of like they're gonna these amateurs are gonna go back and watch that and it should just have like a little bit more of like a fun mm-hmm. just call it as you see it sort of vibe as opposed to like i think when people are watching a high level pro fight your job is to kind of pull apart what's going on and explain things but that can be i don't think it's a little bit too much even for the sake of the amateurs like mm-hmm. they're not supposed to be high-end professionals yet. So don't kind of, I don't like, know. They're just doing the lo- logging, they're learning out. Yeah, I don't want to apply like a, I don't know. It's not like I'm, I'm sitting there criticizing anyone, but I don't want to overanalyze an amateur mm-hmm. because their work's in progress a little bit more. Like I just want to, you from know. Fi- from fight to fight, they will probably look completely different. Yeah, I just want to be like, oh, this is fine. Yeah. These guys are doing great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Let's just keep the energy high. Yeah. <laughs> you, you had development day and pro right I had, uh, oh no you had and, and damage yeah yeah it's like, uh, I, had, uh, I had daniel charwood first in development day he yeah it looked really good against ptj guy yeah it was a good fight yeah, it was a good fight like just good pressure good with his tapes and that it's just like you know and yeah just kind of clinch was all right as well yeah good clinch so it's like you know he's Fucking bone man. He's just built like a clincher. Yeah, he looks <laughs> sharp. It's just like he's just pointing. <laughs> yeah, you just hit him because ah, why am I getting hurt hitting him? <laughs> what weight is he? What weight was so the that one was at sixty six. Sixty six. Uh, but like he's had like a lot of like eating kind of stuff problems before mm. his stomach, and like he he can probably even do like sixty three if he wants. And he's pretty tall. Eh? He'd be about. Yeah. My height, right? mm-hmm. Maybe a little taller. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah probably yeah. a little height. Yeah, but like, yeah, I think the, the, really, the weight thing's more so like, you know, what he can actually hold into yeah. his body. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, he like around that, that weight at the moment, 66, yeah, he looked good. for a development day, you know, no, no real cutting. Yeah, it looked all right. Yeah. And um, see, like, if he gets another one in sometime when, when the next development day is. Like, yeah, cool. But, and, you know, it'd be good. It's like these development days, if there was back to the old style where it's just like there's on a separate day in the gym. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to cut down the time again. But then again, yeah. now these days, as I get you know, I've got a little bit more to do. I'm like, fuck it, just put it up. Like if I'm giving you a day, let's do yeah, everything. Toss it early. It's yeah. rather than two <laughs> weekends in a row. Gives <laughs> the free fun stuff. Yeah. Um, who else? Did? Oh yeah. So uh, okay, it was yeah with Simon City they had that uh, that split up, didn't they? Yeah. So they had the what the, uh, what they kind of uh, called it the. B class amateurs, I think yep. it was, and then they had the pros, yep. and then they had the C class amateurs. Yeah, there. and I think pro and amateur is sort of governed by the state. Mm. I feel like what they're going for is B, A, and C, yeah. and that rather than an amateur and pro mm-hmm. split, right? Yeah, just class split. Yeah, uh, but by the time we got to the fights after the pros, yeah, <laughs> uh, nothing <laughs> <Just> there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah. After the pro fight, yeah, I had uh, Dakota on. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, he had, a, he had a really good. It's like good fight. Like he came out kicking. Uh, came out one. Uh, was it uh, Cruz Briggs boys? Yeah, from yeah. East side from there, and pretty strong fellow. I think he's known for like you know just stopping a lot of people in the first round. Mm. But like, you kind of put a pretty good good kick game on. Second round, I go. Oh, let's see how we go with the clinch. But um, but I don't know. He kept, he kept kind of running for the clinch. Then I say, okay, forget that. Stop, stop doing that now. Yeah. Let's get back to kicking again. <laughs> that was working. Just wanted to try something else. That's all. And then the third round, you could see he just completely stopped kicking. And like, I'm screaming, man, you got to kick, kick him. Where's your kick? Where's your kick? Mm. And then as soon as the fight's done, he's like, he couldn't get out of the ring. He goes, man, I'm oh, sorry, I fucked my foot. Like, he, he actually, kick an elbow or something. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Okay. Just cause it's like he was kicking in the southpaw stance, and I think he got he caught a couple cross checks. But he's like, afterwards, his foot, his foot was. Fucking blown up. Oh. Yeah. No good. <laughs> yeah. He's still kind of a little bit like off in the man. Like, I actually had to pull him out of his um, MMA fight in Melbourne. Oh, uh, damn. Unfortunately. But mm. man, that's how it goes. But you learn. These are yeah. learning experiences. Like, it's still, it was still a really good showing from him against a pretty solid opponent. It's just unfortunate about the yeah. foot. That's all. Shit happens. Yeah. Um, let's go into, like, uh, we'll talk about uh, Luke's one, like, when we covered the pros, though. But let, yeah. let's go into the, a bit of the card itself. Uh, did you want to start with the, the uh, junior title? That happened, the WMC amateur one? Yeah, I was just thinking through what was worth a mention for the rest of the amateur card. Uh, I thought uh, 
I'm biased, but I thought Kayla Nassis mm. versus Jane PTJ yeah. was a sick fight. Did you see this one? No, I didn't get to It was see really it. good. I really, really enjoyed but it. It ended up being a draw. A though. draw, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was two draws in a row. <laughs> was this just on? <laughs> we went on a draw streak. Uh, but yeah, it was, and it was a. I liked that because it was scored well, mm. and um, yeah, I'm a big fan of scoring well. My colleagues at Muay Thai New South Wales are doing really good work. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was a fair draw, and it's just a really good fight, a good battle in the clinch. Uh, I always talk about it, but like some of the skill level of fighters with sub five fights now is like ridiculously good, and it's better than like when I started. People with 15 fights weren't that good. No. At actual tie boxing as well, yeah, like a good clinch battle. And both girls knew what they were looking for in terms of scores. And like that makes a difference too because they're really going to – like it's like an intelligent war in the clinch. Like I really liked it. I thought it was a sick fight. Yeah, like it was especially it's like maybe five, maybe a little bit more years. Like like the New South Wales talent that's coming through is looking really good from yeah. the get-go. It's like, you know, development days have to do with that. But even some of these guys, like, you know, especially like you just have to look at more you. Like, a lot of them don't even have am- development days. So yeah. They just go straight into amateurs and, man, just like the, the actual style of them all look really good, polished. Yeah. They had a busy day, eh? Six fighters on or something. Yeah. Seven fighters. But then, like, was it three different states? Was that the same day? Oh, they had seven fights on that show. On that show. <laughs> 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 they had the, um, Max in WA yeah. and, um, Gabrielle in Queensland too, but I'm pretty sure they had seven <laughs> on the arms of Sydney. They had a good day. I think they won six of them. Mm, something yeah, like that. Sold. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So um. So the top of that amateur card though, we uh, there was a WMC amateur junior title at featherweight. I liked this. Yeah. Kobe Sandlins from SRG versus Jaden Kingsley from Phoenix. Yeah. Um. I did I yeah. I was at the back prepping for this one, but I heard this was a really good fight. Yeah, it was mad. Yeah, from these young fellas from there. Um. Yeah. How did it look out there? Yeah, um, the SRG boy, he's just got... Uh, the, I like their, their young fellas. Like, he's just got a bit of swagger about him. Uh, I enjoyed it. He's got... He's, uh, his style's got a bit of personality to it. You know what I mean? I enjoy watching that. It was... The Phoenix boy was that classic Phoenix style. He's very aggressive. He was trying to cut the ring and, and play a, a punch-based game. And um, Sandland's big kicker, just throwing these... Wicked right kicks up over the arms and played that game really nicely. Just used uh, his opponent's pressure against him and just had that nice high kick over the arms so it would land almost wrap around the glove and, and come across like, you know, so that the shin's coming across the tricep like that. A good good kick to negate uh, an aggressive adversary. I uh, liked it. Racked up his points. He he had a, a measured, controlled Rounds one and two and, and by three and four was just really sending it. Like you could see maybe the instruction from the corner or just by nature of his the comfort he was establishing. Yeah, he really, you could start to hear those kicks. And with that, as he started out point his opponent, his opponent would come more, become more aggressive. And, and fair play to him had some moments where it looked like he might retake the fight and, and uh, put uh, Sanderland in a little bit of trouble. But just good... Good ring generalship from the SRG boy. And, and by the end of it, he was getting a bit creative. He was running him onto elbows and stuff like that, trying some new things out. So, yeah, I really like this fight. Enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, it ended up going to, yeah, I don't think I said it, but, yeah, end up going Kobe's way. Mm. New, new champion at, at yeah. the Amateur Juniors. Looking good. And that's what we were talking about before, yeah, these young fellas and these amateurs in, in particular, looking very polished. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see. Oh yeah, then yeah. Wasn't there something on the scoring as well? Um, <laughs> on the Instagram post, <laughs> should we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I honestly, honestly, I'll say this because a few people asked me about it, and I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I I was sitting there in the back commentating. Mm. I just see people start shouting and like. I don't, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what happened, but I just think there may have been. Just like a, uh, like there was obviously someone was watching this fight through like a somewhat uneducated lens because 
I don't know. Like, I don't... It's hard. Like, both guys did a great job. They did. It was a fun fight. It was a high-energy fight. However, it was a really easy fight to score. Uh, I think the judges all scored at 50-46 and 50-47. And that's, you know, some some slightly different interpretation there. But all of those are fair scores. But for some reason, I just saw a bunch of, like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like, people ask me what happened. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty much watching the live stream, same as you, but... Obviously, there was some disagreement with the decision. Mm. Uh, and sometimes sometimes there's decisions that are worth arguing about. And discourse is amazing. Like, I like it when people say, why did oh, – sometimes. I like it when people say, why didn't this guy win this fight? Great, because we can explain it to you and then you'll know for next time. But sometimes it's just a little bit stubborn. Mm. It's like, we should have won because – but what, like, no, I'm telling you, that was not a contentious score. It was like, if you know how to watch Thai boxing, mm-hmm. that's how it is. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, I just don't, I don't know. That's, that's all like, yeah. it's disappointing to say, I don't know who it was. Yeah, uh, it was a, but I don't know. Like, I like it. That's what people, I should have a point to make on this about another fight. That is, I like when people are passionate. Either way, like, you know, it's like when people, like, if you're here to cheer one guy, get really noisy about it and stuff like that, but, and blow up afterwards. It's good. Let's, this is sports. Let's argue. <laughs> I love to argue. It's no problem. Like, that really, at the end of the day, when you think about it, that is what sporting fanfare is. It's being able to be like, this is what I think, and this is why what you think is wrong. Like, we don't have to be all, because it's Thai boxing and whatever, we don't have to always be nice. But there are discussions here where it's like, no, no, I need to help you understand how this sport is scored because we'll all enjoy it more. And you, everyone's going to go further. If you're like, imagine playing a game where you didn't know the rules. Mm. Like what if you just went out on a rugby field and you have no idea how to score a try. Like you just don't know. Like, <laughs> you, like you've got the ball and you don't know whether you're supposed to throw it. Like that's what people are doing here. And then, but then for some reason, everyone's right. Everyone's like, no, I should have won. Because, like, I don't know. I just, I didn't get it. I didn't like it because I thought it was a really cool fight between two promising young guys. And they could go on to fight 10 more times and have different results. They're young. It's the beginning of their careers. Shake hands and go home. Well, that's it. Like, you know, it's, it's funny though. Like, because <clears throat> you just see on the online kind of stuff from there. Like, ev- like p- there's people like arguing against it, but the yeah. guys that actually fought. They, they, haven't said, they haven't said anything. They just go, oh. so, you know, whatever. It's yeah, like, maybe you don't need to speak for people, mm. you know, but I don't know. It's it's always disappointing for me to see that. And maybe it's something about titles. It adds like an importance that yeah. fights. I don't know. I think titles are good, especially for this. It was just, yeah. it was a fun fight. Well done, boys. Like, live to fight another day. That's it. Like, I don't... Definitely yeah. do it down the down line yeah. again. You know, could fight again in 10 years. <laughs> you know? Be even better at pros. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a cool fight. It's just, I don't know, people ask me about... Uh, I got accused the other day of um, not bringing up contentious issues on the podcast anymore. Oh, someone, yeah. someone told me I changed. <laughs> you changed. <Yeah. laughs> so, that's my take on that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we want ranch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, fair enough. yeah, I don't know. I have no rant about that. But it's, it's just, like it's, but it's like it's always the same shit, though. It's all, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can only say this stuff so many times. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. There you go. Fair enough. You savages. All right, let's go to the pro card. So the first one off the ranks was uh, Michael Zelensky from MSP Muay Thai versus Kenta. This Sawa. was fun, eh? Super fun. Yeah, I was watching it like we're up, up at the backstage. Yeah, yeah. And this like, was fun. I was like, uh, what I was really like. I, I like I Kenta. I haven't seen a lot of Kenta. I, I, was, I, I watched a little bit, but then I saw this one. I go, wow. He's like, he's just grown in levels since he's yeah. grown, like, you know, since uh, Roots. He's since not roots. even been training that long. Yeah. He's had five fights or something. Mm-hmm. I think he's been training like 18 months. I could be wrong. I saw something on his. Yeah, he's not been training long. He's good. I like him a lot. Yeah, he fucking hits hard. Man, yeah, he's and like he's crafty, good. moves well. I like him and I like Michael. I mean, I always say I like, I like everyone, <laughs> but I think Michael's like one of these dudes that he's just so consistent. Like he's on, I feel like he's on every other show mm. fighting like, he's getting, all, he's getting a lot of fights. Hard ass dudes, like never going to say no to anything. Mm-hmm. I like that about him and I thought he looked good. Yep. I thought this was really close fight. I thought it could have gone either way mm. and I, I even think Michael 
found his rhythm in the third round mm. and gave – there was an experience gap here, and I think in the third round you could see that. Yeah. Like, he was really starting to establish some – do some good work in the clinch and, and show a strength advantage maybe over Kenta, but the way – Hand out in the end was Kenta had won the first two rounds. Which I haven't watched this fight back, but I think that's a pretty fair score. Yeah. It's just maybe it's that tricky three round thing, you know, where Michael probably had the best round of the fight, yeah. but Kenta had just racked up the points round one and two. So, well, it's like we always kind of said from Michael because we have seen him in a couple of fight, uh, yeah. fair few fights. Yeah, it's just like that that pacing for a three round fight. No, he's not. I, I've not actually seen him fight five rounds. Yeah, but he seems better suited. To five. Mm, uh, five. Yeah, he's a, he, he likes to take a sort of slow first round, first two rounds, and, and it's that clinching style. He likes to kind of walk you down, and then once he gets a hold of you, he, he gets going, but he takes a couple rounds too. Yeah. But I think he's a, a high potential fighter. I uh, see. He looks strong. Mm-hmm. He's, he's quite difficult to bother. Yes. Even if you're outpointing him and landing on him. Like, he's fought two guys that I think just outmoved him. Mm. Uh, that was... Uh, Kaha okay, yeah. last time and, mm-hmm. and Kenta this time I thought they implored some s- kind of similar tactics so they were just a little bit too flighty they weren't there they didn't play that meet in the middle kind of game with him but <coughs> yeah really good fight mm-hmm. yeah enjoying I th- to me uh, Kenta is uh, one to watch yeah, yeah. Um, I'm liking him a lot I think Don Miller's got a good little stable of up and comers mm. now yeah yeah him nice. a, a couple of the guys I really like mm. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's funny because, um, yeah, you got 10 and then they got the big fella as well, don't they? Gun. Gun. Yeah. <laughs> I really like him. He's, he was he looks, looking huge. Dude, like that, that, that 90-something kilo boy that moves like that. Yeah. Something Good special. luck. Good luck to you. Yeah, he's, he won my stoppage um, Friday night. Mm-hmm. Hardcore. Yeah, he's throwing jump knees and shit. That should be illegal. It's <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of man coming yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next up the card, so um, had... Paul Rogers from SRG, uh, my boy Luke Taylor, mm. Double Dragon. And, like, yeah, this this was an interesting fight from there. Like, Luke wasn't really happy with his performance afterwards. He, But it's like he's it, just saying, it's funny, like, you know, like always the, the backstage, Paul's, Paul's like the lovely guy. Yeah, like nice guy. Paul. And, like, afterwards he goes, and, like, uh, he goes, he goes, fuck, you're awkward. And then, like, yeah. Luke goes, no, you're fucking awkward. Like, you know, it's, just, it's hard to hit, like, Everything comes down looping. It's oh, you keep changing your stance and that, and it's like, but yeah, like um, yeah, this this fight in particular, like as we came in, like just seeing like how Paul is like his physicality, like yeah, like, strong guy. Paul, try to try to stay out of that range a bit more, mm. and have the, uh, like you know, and trying to shut down his elbows in particular. Mm. Um, and yeah, there's like there was a couple of things for Luke that we talked about afterwards. Like you know, it has this tendency like he he gets into the like works into this range. But then kind of hops out of it straight yeah, away. That confused me in yeah. watching. And then, like, yeah, then we just we're still working on a little bit. But like, he's, it's something he's kind of getting a little bit of cognitive now. And then, but he just kind of goes, "Look, you get into this range that you work, but then you dissuaded by jumping out of it again." Yeah. Yeah, I don't know at the moment. Like, yeah, I just kind of go in and out. I go, yeah, look, you just got have that little bit more defined plan. Like, if we're going here, we're going there in these different avenues. Like, you know, we're going to clinch, yeah, punch. instead of like going in out, in out. It's a little bit like. He sets things up mm. and then doesn't do them. Mm. Like he really puts himself in a good position to score mm-hmm. and then exits. Yeah. Like that's what I find because one of the judges scored this fight a draw. Yeah. I actually thought Luke was confusing Paul. Mm-hmm. Like he was moving him, like putting him in places where he, he couldn't quite do anything. Like Paul struggled to get anything off. And I think the logic behind that being a draw is that Luke was positionally winning the whole fight, but not really scoring. Mm. And that's where, like, it was closer than it needed to be in that regard that I think the next phase for him will be working. Whether it's, like, he'll throw, for example, it might be, like, a really busy boxing combination, but not a big score, just a touch, 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 like, a little level change. Freezes the guy and then exits to safety, where it's, like, for Muay Thai scoring, where it's not volume-based, it's impact, you'd want to be establishing like that and maybe it's your big knee or your kick or that's where you engage the clinch and really try mm-hmm. to that's what i think it's just so like we've talked about him before he's got a good eye 
I think he has a lot of ideas that it's just about like you got to pick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind over of analyze, over analyze. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like you said, like um, yeah, he confused Paul a fair bit, and mm. that was the part of the plan was to, to stop him actually doing stuff. Yeah, I'll which he did forward. well. He did the, the as far as like yeah, halting the offense. Yeah, yeah he did a really good job of that. But yeah, and he <laughs> to, got to hurt these boys. Yeah, he does. He yeah. hits. He hits fucking hard. It's like he, yeah, just got to yeah. Sit, sit down on the idea a little bit more. Yeah. Let's get there. But it's good. That was, it, was, it was a good win for no, him. A good win. Um, talk to Paul afterwards. He goes, oh, it's like, yeah, we should do like a fight round. He goes, guys, I'm done fighting Luke now. We already fought twice. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was going, oh, fair enough then. Maybe we can spar. And he goes, yeah, cool. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I guess it's whatever. But um, but yeah, he's got a. I guess he's got a bang up fight coming up soon as well. Yeah, so. it's a quick turnaround for him, eh? Yeah, it is. It is. So that the Okia show is coming up soon. Mm. Your boys are doing commentary on that one. Yes. And um, in that fight, yeah, Paul Rogers versus Ollie Hale. Um, I don't think you need a big ring for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit in the middle. Just yeah. Go for pull it. the ropes in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ref that fight because I won't oh. have to. I won't have to move. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is easy. This <laughs> no footwork. Just have the doctor ready to go. No refereeing <laughs> footwork necessary. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, next up on there. Ah, so we had the WMC uh, professional featherweight title. At that time, the current uh, the the title holder was Dala Tonsamouth versus the challenger from um, Canberra Moi Yu, Davina Davina. I love Davina. Uh, I, only, I I didn't see the whole fight, but I caught the last couple of ends, and I'm just going, my god, that right hand, that right hand, just, yeah, just, just smack. smack. Oh, she's so good, and like Dala was tricky, tricky uh, in the beginning. I think it was a lot about Davina being patient and not playing a. a Dala moves a lot and she's quite like erratic and that's where she shocks people sometimes is she does things in these big bursts and like Davina was very smart. Rounds one and two, just be effective, read a little bit, um, keep establishing kind of real scores and, and not not play like a like for like game in terms of the footing, just run her onto things and then you could see, yeah, it became a very boxing based offense. Just ran onto these Big, I thought, um, fair play, Dala. I thought she was going to go down. Mm. So for sure, because she was, um, she was on ice skates at one point. Yeah. In the, especially mm. that fourth round, just uh, I thought she was going to the canvas. Because Davina had just found it so well, like she just had that point where she really found it. Um, that right hand and was landing it pretty much at will. I've seen this in a couple of her fights recently. So that right hand's coming along really well. Yeah. I think that's a big game change, especially in like the girls. Yeah. Like this kind of like this kind of monster punching game. It's just like, then you can build around it. It's like, yeah, you can set up some really good stuff. Yeah. Davina's is getting really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm excited to see her. That's it. So the, Small Axe is now the WMC uh, state title yeah. for <coughs> for New South Wales. And, um, yeah, and same, uh, same thing. Just really interested to see, like, yeah, her build up uh, as it keeps going. I'm quite interested really in who is left. Mm. I don't think there's that many. What's the weight again? What's the weight? It's 53. 53. Yeah. I think like a lot of the there's a few girls that, that like they could probably meet in weight, but that she's not, or it's fifty two point something even. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a couple of like in that sort of fifty something kilo cluster. There's a few. I think a couple are a little bit too big. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's heaps. Yeah, of girls like, uh, left. Yeah, well, I'm like, sure there is like some. Joanna, what's a little bit like? Uh, like these are weights where like you could make it. Yeah. You could make it probably. Um, but I think a little bit bigger, yeah. A bit bigger? Ah, yeah. Fair enough then. But yeah, great fight nonetheless. Yeah, really good. <laughs> the Vino. Uh, and then we got the main event from uh for the card was Darren Chen from PTJ versus Jordan Fielding from Strongheart down in Adelaide. Uh yeah, th- this fight was uh just I think it was just a very classic Darren Chen kind of performance. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, just kind of, like as we talked about before, it's really developing a really Great kicking game. Kick game, yeah. Um, clinching, it's always strong as well. Um, how do you how do you view this fight? I just thought I, I thought Darren established himself quite early. Like a, a lot of right low kicks and left switch kicks up over the arm just scoring points with him really well. Jordan played a very tight game, was slow building and you saw it get much more competitive. Mm-hmm. Round three and four, Jordan definitely picked up the pace, but I thought 
Darren just knew how to keep him where he needed him. Mm. Uh, I thought Darren won quite convincingly. Yeah, it's like with Jordan, like you can see there was a parallel differential. Like, you know, when he when he did throw, it was pretty solid. Yeah. From there, but uh, Darren just did a bit more. He was more pinpoint accurate. Yeah, uh, accuracy, and ring smart. Putting it on. It's like, um, there, was, there was one time with one kick from Jordan for to clip Darren pretty good there. Mm. And I've got, oh shit, that might change it. But then you see, like, Darren just kind of shake it off, guess what? Mm. Back to work again. This is one I would like to watch back because I was, you know, commentating and commentating with Michael Green, Mm -hmm. who fucking muted himself on the (laughs) road cast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. A few people asked me why they couldn't hear Mark Green. That's why. Because he fucking muted himself. (laughs) That would be just weird on the live stream. It's like, you're talking. And then it's like, yes, I can Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like, at that point, I've been commentating so long. Like, I was really happy to let someone else just have a crack. Yeah. (laughs) Just, yep. (laughs) (laughs) Take the range. Yeah. Out to silence. (laughs) But yeah, I I would have to watch it back. But Mm. I, I was a little bit interested that it was a split decision. Mm. Oh yeah, that's right. It was a split decision. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I, th- I I was expecting. Yeah, it's like yeah, it I thought it was yeah, I thought it was kind of clear. But must have been yeah. Don't think like there yeah, was, I was there just was some close rounds like, through the middle. It was definitely a competitive fight the whole way through. It was a mm. classy fight. Yeah, no one was bashing anyone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I was interested. That's just just uh, not to say that I necessarily even disagreed. Just so I'd like to watch it again and mm. yeah, see. Yeah, and that's another one. Jordan out the back. Classic. So, so he's, he's so chill. Yeah. He just cruises around, go, hey, oh, how are you going, guys? It's like you know, run around, and then veteran, after, and then a after veteran. The, yeah, and then and then after after the fight, never wore pants. <laughs> just cruised around on his really. Time. Yep. Why? I don't know. It, it seems to be. His <laughs> it thing was that, cold. It seems, no, it seems to be his thing though. Like he was like really? Don Miller's just going. Oh, I was like, you know, you gotta keep your pants on tonight. Uh. Bye. <laughs> I don't know, mate. It was get him on the podcast and ask. It him. was super fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it just get too hot. Like I'm all for not wearing pants, absolutely. But time and place, it. it was fucking freezing at that point. Derek Lewis, my balls are hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Respect. Like I'm not criticizing. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. <laughs> all right, cool. So that does the sign of the Sydney. Uh, break down the card that happened. Good card. Good card. Um, yeah. I think another one's happening again soon, like September. But September. Yeah, trying to get back on it. All right. Um, so let's go into on the same that happened across the country in Perth. We had uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix kicking off from there. Uh, let me pick up this car. I don't see where I want to start. I only saw the top three. Yeah, I, I only saw a couple. Uh, to, oh, no. It's like, well, I'll give a shout out to uh, long time listener, Rioni Sodden. Had a solid fight against uh, me, uh, Megan. It's oh yeah, I need to watch that. I like these two. I like, like um, these two. These two. Brian, uh, Brian, same thing. Like right hand was on my yeah. that that night with Fura. Uh, she was finding really strong, knocking back Megan's head. Uh, Megan probably is just start. She was getting really strong towards the end though, yeah. clinching. But it's the same thing. Like uh, just started a little bit too slow, and probably let the the first three, three rounds kind of just go Brianna's way before she picked it up really strong. For yeah. Fifth. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, it was a good fight from both of those girls. Though. Yeah, I busy really year it. for um, Brownie mm-hmm. coming back from the yeah. Well, what, I think it's, that uh, it's like world really games ignited thing. Yeah, a, a, a fire under. Yeah, nice one. It was good. All right, so let me go. Um, so we had um, uh, Max McVicker versus Damien Nelson. I really like this. Mm. Max is fucking class. Yeah, it's, it's really. I only got like halfway through this fight, but like. In particular, like you know, his catch, catch sweeps, yeah, his clinch work with elbows, that, that quick burst, kind of just mm-hmm. getting his arm on the middle, elbow up the center, mm-hmm. trip, like just the. I thought the this is just one to watch and watch the way that Max set traps for Damon. Mm. Class, absolute class. Like he's a really smart operator. His ring IQ is way up. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the. His composure is so cool. Yeah, he's so smart. And I just thought, like, you watched the first round was quite measured. And, and Damon's naturally quite aggressive. Like, mm. he likes to fight from the outset. And first round close, just Damon was going for it a little bit more. Max, I thought, was just having a look, neutralizing a little. And then you could just see the way that Max just knows how to. I thought what was my favorite thing about this was the way that I felt like Max was positioning Damon to throw what he wanted. Like, putting himself in the spot where he knew what was going to come back from. 
Damon and then answering it like that. Like really, really ring smart, high level stuff from Max here. I'm excited to see him fight again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because this is an interesting one because Damon's the national champion, but the belt was not on the yeah, line. That's right. That's, that's yeah, so now, I mean, if I understand how rankings work, mm. Max, I would imagine, will leapfrog Damon in the world rankings. Because mm. regardless of a national title being on the line, I think Damon was number 12 or 11 or something and Max will slot in mm. there, I would imagine. So I don't know if the idea is you fight again mm. for the title or Max w- would now be eligible. Being did did it say, uh, was there any reason why it wasn't for the title? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it all works. You know, Max was coming off a loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could have been two losses. Oh, oh. Simpayak and, and oh, yeah. the one overseas were they back to back or not? No, nothing. Back. They went back to back. I don't know. Back Sakari was it that in between? Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> <Either> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe coming off a loss. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> maybe you have to be a show unified for an Australian title. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I don't know if you run it back. For the title or like you have to be ranked in the top 20 to fight for the international title mm. and that would now put Max in position to do that. So I don't know what – to, to me, like I never really give a shit about titles. Mm. I don't think that's a fight that is worth doing right back just for the sake of yeah. winning a title. particular belt. Like it was a very comfortable win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it seems almost like a – just a matter of formality if you're doing it. If that's what they want to do. I understand it. If you really, or like if you need the, the national title to go on, to, yeah. then okay, you do it again. And you know, Damon's, Damon's a smart operator too, so I'm sure another fight would be different. But yeah, this is really worth a watch. It's on Muto Grand Prix Australia Facebook. Max is really smart, man. I really like him. Yeah, nice. All right, so going from there. Um Oh, yeah. So, we've had a WBC world title as well. Oh, this go. is so good. So, we had uh, a name? Uh, Neve. Yeah? Okay, sorry. It doesn't make any sense, but... Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm, I'm just, I, I just keep looking at it and I go... Don't try to read it phonetically. <laughs> 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 From Frank Jim in UK. Yeah, yeah, legendary. Yep. Um, versus the Australian Shannon Gardner from um, Cowsock. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd actually haven't seen this fight. I've been a big fan of Shannon Gardner for a while. Of course. I watched her fight live like a few years ago. That was the first time I'd seen her. I was like, ooh. Uh, she's so strong, but I thought this was just, this was a true world title fight. Like, it was a, def- like, this is what I like about the way things are working at the moment. Like, this was a defending world champion being brought into Australia to fight a deserving contender. So, like, well done, Muay Thai Grand Prix, for setting these things up because this was sick and, like, this would be a good learning fight for Shannon because this was a big step up and, and Neve was just so classy. So, so, so classy. Like, just it was a, a really strong... Like, it was just the way... Neve's ability to just punish any attempted offense from Shannon was just incredible. Like, whether it's she's... Can wait. It was like... She was aggressively countering. Like, she would stalk forward, but a kick comes and it's catch and sweep. And when they cl- – her clinch game was crazy, crazy good. Like, these big st- – you could see the power coming through on these knees and then just closing everything out, effortless kind of turn and sweep. So good end was chopping away at the legs with some big kicks towards the end, just a real kind of – yeah, broke her down as the fight wore on, like – Neve was class to watch. Hmm. Um, and it was like Shannon really proved she belonged in there with her as well, which like I knew she would. And um, yeah, just I think, it, yeah, like we say, a big opportunity for, for the Aussie and a good learning fight, but also just a brilliant opportunity to watch a class operator um, in Neve Callahan. Hmm. Nicely done. Yeah, it's like Shannon, there's young as do a heaps of time, like yeah, to even grow further. Yeah. So which is like, hey, which is like uh, insane, really. Yeah, it's a scary <laughs> thought to be honest. <laughs> and then you got that like to see that class above from Neve, like yeah, man, women's uh, Muay Thai, it's like it's rising so fast. Yeah, it's great to see. All right, so let's go to the main event there. So we have the the world champion George Mann. From yeah. People's gym. What a boring. <laughs> Boring performance <laughs> from uh, Mike. Um, was it Mikel? Uh, no, um, what is it? 
Benatar. Yeah, so, Mikhail Benatar. Yeah, Mikhail yeah. Benatar. Okay. Um, doesn't say the Jimmy's from the. Uh, but he's from France. Yeah, yep, I cool. think based in Thailand at based the moment, or, yep. okay. or he spent a lot of time there. Okay, I can't find the t- uh, the gym name under here, unfortunately, from there. But like, um, hey, f- mate, like George, I think George man, like just just controlled every moment of this fight. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask people a question. Hmm. What the fuck do you want from George? <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertained? Yeah, like, what do you want? <laughs> like, he, he's a he's a ring genius, hmm. uh, but. He's too big, right? Up at light heavyweight, yeah. wins the world championship. Oh, but he's boring. Walks Dude, people down, man. stops them. What do you want? What do you want? Yeah. Like, I don't know why. And Benatar, man, he's a specimen. He's yeah, yeah. He's Dude's no dude. slouch. Big guy. I, I almost thought... I thought George kind of like flipped the script on him in this one. In that... He didn't let this be like a... Like, he didn't play a long game. Like, they didn't nah. stand out range. And he walked Benatar down, down the whole way through. Yeah, it would push him back and then just smother. Yeah. It was that push and smother kind of game. Yeah. It uh, like, didn't really give him a chance at all to get anything going. Nah, just constantly disruptive. Well, like, Benatar was just all just in a reactive state. Yeah. Just couldn't get... It wasn't actually... Had a chance to actually go forward. And I thought, like, George played that set game really well where he would always keep something out just annoying, whether it's that deep pushing back. But it wasn't, like, push and wait. It was, like, push and follow. Push and follow, smother, smother. Uh, A lot of kind of, like, really, like, covering a lot of distance at once. Mm. But then he would wait for those times where he'd he'd almost give Benatar a break because he'd chase, Mm -hmm. chase and cover that space and then punish him like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like that kind of that rhythm break mm-hmm. of like, here's your chance and then kind of steal it away. I, I thought, cause that's where I thought he did the most damage. Cause that's where that, that's the finishing elbow sequence started was the way like Benatar ran in and ran himself onto an elbow. Like the only thing he had going from was overhand, but then well, it became his undoing cause George popped him with the elbows. Too ready. So. Yeah. So it, it was just that like he created, he fostered a sense of desperation mm. And then punish the, the attempt to capitalise. Like, fuck, George is good, man. Yeah, very good. So good. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, and that, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's like for the rest of the boy type like, public is like, yeah, what do you want from him? I mean, like, 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 like I don't think he's like hated or anything. No. It's just he just has a small subset of people just have really fucking idiotic opinions <laughs> about him. Like, I just don't know what you want. Like, well, they, just, they pigeonhole him into like, yeah, this is what he is. And it's like. Like just even, but even people say, "Oh, he's just long." Yeah. The other dude was just as long as him yeah. in this fight. Like, what That's do you nice. want from him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate you, George. Yes, very appreciated. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> and that yeah, that does the the Muay Thai Grand Prix one. What a day that was! All those cards we just talked about yeah. were on the same one day. day, and oh. then we didn't even cover all. Oh, the we shots. haven't even been to Destiny yet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, let's go to Destiny. Queensland. Yeah, we we'll go quickly to Queensland from there. I only saw one fight on this card. I saw two. Two? Yeah. So and I saw highlights of some yeah. others, yeah. That's all right. So, yeah, Destiny was oh, on. Oh, no, yeah, I saw. Um, the said, uh, Gabriel Ramos mm. was on there versus, uh, doing a rematch versus... Uh, Lucy Hotly Lennon. anticipated rematch, yeah. Mm. I, I didn't get to see this one. Good fight, yeah. Like, I really enjoyed their first fight, and I thought, I thought their first fight was very, very impressive from Gabriel. Well, it was very impressive from both, but... But it was a fight where, like, there was a big experience gap uh, and Gabrielle really looked like she belonged in there and, and like, made a pretty serious argument for winning that fight. Uh, and since then, went away and racked up, like, four, four wins in a row, I think. Some really big performance. Getting better really fast. And um, this was a good battle. I just think Gabrielle looked nice. It looked good. It was a good, smart fight between both early like quite evenly matched and then Lucy's power just pulled away Lucy was really good she just really chopping away at Gabrielle's leg which started to kind of create that that hesitancy I thought and build some openings and yeah just uh made her power count and then um just started to kind of control the ring and and run away Lucy's real good I've been uh like uh it's cool to see that mini flyweight division have so much activity because um, yeah. yeah, Lucy's had been uh, seems to have a, a good. Uh, there seems to be a lot of opponents. She's on a lot of the Queensland shows. They're doing a good job promoting her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, like Gabrielle's made a big name for herself as well. 
So, yeah, a good, good fun fight and a very strong performance by Lucy Debman. Awesome, nice. Um, so the, the main event for this fight was uh, Jake Lund. Before we do the main event, can yeah. I talk about Josh McCulloch? Oh, yeah, that's right. Josh McCulloch is in there. Versus Corey Barnes. Yeah, I didn't even How think they was that. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> they look three weight classes apart. That's it. And Josh starched him. Yeah, um, I, I heard about. it. I don't actually see, see it, him. but yeah, it sma- smashed him. Amazing. God damn. Yeah. It's funny, like, because, like, you see, like, Corey would have cut down heaps for this fight. Yeah. But you see with Josh, like, no, it's like, it's a weight position where he probably doesn't even cut. No, nah, I think they fought yeah. a 63 and a half yeah. and like Josh can make 58. Mm. Uh, and I don't even think he he would find that that hard. Like he looked very comfortable in his – because I think Corey was a late replacement. Okay. So they would have changed mm. the weight a little bit. But, like, uh, but he was half the size. <laughs> like they were. David versus Goliath. <laughs> yeah, but he's so quick and he just, he's got a good eye. Hit him with some – like – Played a good short man game, just covered space and threw round punches and ended up stiffening him. Oh, yeah. He's on a, on a tear. I want to know what's next. I almost feel like he gets slept on a little bit. Yeah. That's, so yeah. He's just, it's like, I guess he's the building, but it's like um, Tamworth, I think that's what the yeah. is, the Chaffee's martial arts from there. So like he, I can imagine he could get left out a little bit. I feel also he's think like, a name now. yeah, now he's had a couple of massive performances in a row. Wicked knockout power. I think just because he looks 12 years old, he's easy to sleep on. But, like, I know his preferred weight class is in the high 50s. I reckon even um, Ibrahim. Got a rematch. Got yeah, a they rematch. fought in the amateurs. I'm Definitely. pretty sure um, Josh well, these, won. These are, yeah, I think Josh won as well. Yeah. Like, these two are probably the ugly best, like, what, 57 guys in? I, d- I don't know how low – because I keep – this is the other reason why it's hard to kind of place Josh because he fights in any weight class. Mm. But I, I don't know what his preferred weight is, but it'd be the high 50s somewhere. Definitely 59. I don't know if he can go all the way to 57. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Good fights. Yeah. Good fights there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so yeah, the last fight for that card. Um, yeah. Jack Lon. Yeah. On the ghetto gym. <laughs> the garage, the garage stomper gym. <laughs> Iron Lundy's, I thought they Iron announced it. Yes, and yes, and yes, un, un, yeah, I guess yes, that's the name. Okay, cool. <laughs> and uh, versus, uh, yep, Cody, uh, Cody Jameson. Yeah. For, <coughs> Machete Muay Thai, uh, full force. Yeah. Um, look, like, C- Cody got stopped in the second round. Um, yeah. He did fight three weeks beforehand against a, a tough fight against Nick Trask also. So you could also, you could say, was this probably a... A smart idea going in against arguably one of the best guys. It wasn't. Ever. <laughs> yeah. it wasn't. Go, going in, like doing Australian more kind of yeah. But like, look, um, like I respect it. Respect the Cody's like he's stepping up. Yeah, he's taking the names. But like, man, yeah, I just hate the things like you know you had you you just came off three weeks ago fighting and coming to this fight. Yeah, you know the setup the, the setup could have been better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. Each their own. Whatever you want to do. Mm. Uh, this is a tricky one because I know Cody's won't be wanting to fight the top guys and, and get the chance to make his name. But the golf in skill level between everyone he's fought before and even into the Nick Trask fight was massive. So, like, I, I, I feel backing these fights up right next to each other was probably... No, I mean, look, it would have been amazing if he'd won them both. Mm. So you'd, we'd be talking about what a legendary run that was. So, so you know, I guess, like, you know, dare to kind of mm-hmm. go for something crazy. But I think, like, well, maybe it's just that thing. Like, he has had a lot of fights where you look and he's very promising but has been, for whatever reason, struggling to get in. He's been wanting these fights with the big guys and for whatever reason not getting them. So, I guess when they both come up, you just say yes. <laughs> Both times, uh, but like maybe this is the attitude you would have taken from the guys you used to be fighting. But I think maybe it's just about realizing when you get to that higher level, you've got to treat the fights a little bit differently. Yeah. I mean, not a lot. Of the turnaround was insane. Three weeks, like mm-hmm. it happens. But yeah, for like your first crack at these sort of established names and doing them both back to back, it was it was a risky decision, yeah. especially yeah. when you're going like these bigger guys now. Like, you know, and you, and then, and like people like Nick Trask when you fight five rounds. Yeah. You're coming out dinged. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, that's fair. That's that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, 
you know, to I, I think I, I didn't get to see the Nick, Nick Trask fight. Just get out point, and I'm sure it would have been a good, a good kind of litmus test to be like, all right, how are we going to go against a more established name, someone with some experience, and probably would have had a lot of things to retool after that. But with that kind of turnaround time, you don't have a lot of time mm. to retool everything to fight Jake Lund, who's one of the best light heavyweights mm-hmm. we've had in recent years. You know, a former world champion, uh, only lost that belt by retiring coming back so yeah a tricky run I saw the Jake fight I didn't see the Nick fight mm-hmm. yeah There's that. but like yeah it goes like so now Jake Lund back on the scene again interesting uh, yeah a couple of uh, got a couple of fights now back under his belt I think I think the ring rush should be shaken off now yeah and but also got to step up the names yeah. yeah, yeah, a couple. It's like he's, he's a great talent. Like, good to see him back on. But let, let's let's see the names now. I mean, I don't know. I know there's a lot of logistic, logistical things mm-hmm. behind getting these fights organised and things like that. Like, I know a lot of people would like to see Jake fight George. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to see it too. Of course. So, yeah. So make it happen. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did we even really recap the fight? <laughs> Jake. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we'd say Jake got the win. Yeah. 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 Jake. So a strong, a couple of strong liver shots from Jake. No one just caught, caught Cody on. Like, well, actually, Cody gave one back first mm. from there, but Jake would just put himself in a position to like, yeah, just pound on the body a bit. Yeah, there was just a difference in strength and re- ring presence here that would could feel like, like Jake played a different game in this fight. Yeah, yeah. so he didn't wait a second. Like no. he just, <laughs> just went straight forward. Yeah, yeah he knew what he wanted to do and, and executed. Yeah, close to flawlessly. Yeah, so interest, interesting. Interesting times a lot. Have a look on on. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. So, let's go to our last breakdown. This one. So, War on the Shore. Back at I was the there. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, happened last weekend. Uh, yeah, you fought on it. I did. Yeah. It was, and it was a pretty good showing you versus um, Brayden. Brayden, yeah. yeah. Brayden from uh, Fight World. Yeah, Fight World. Yeah. Fight World. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, pretty good performance, mate. Um, that's like, you know, go... go uh, you can see Brayden want to come off the bat, come off strong. Yeah. For a head kick there for a bit. I go, oh, shit. Mm. That, that looks a bit hairy. Yeah. And then, but then, as always, you're just too stubborn to put down. <laughs> <laughs> or even be, like, be shaken at all. But, um, but yeah, yeah, like, chopped up the leg really good. Um, all the way until, it, like, until, when you got into that third round there, you just switch it up to a really just, like, clinch dominance game. Is that what you felt like you were you know, trying to do all along? Yeah, I felt like, like, I told you, that, like, the day before what I thought was going to happen. Yep. And pretty much played out that way. I like I started to feel like I was going to stop him with leg kicks. And then I stopped kicking his leg because I wanted to do something different like <laughs> I I wanted to play that kind of pressure knee game and I thought it was working really well. Um and that's what I wanted to work because it's not something I've done with a ton of confidence in the past but I think it's actually one of my better attributes so I needed to just get a bit more assertive about pushing that clinch. And, and I felt like, yeah, once every time I kind of locked on, I, I was pretty firmly in control. So, yeah, that was kind of the game we wanted to play. Worked out yeah, it was pretty like much everyone wanted yeah, to. Yeah, well, like it was pretty dominant performance by you. It didn't like you seem like too, too much in trouble with anything in particular mm. from there. But I think you just kind of like you pushed the game plan straight away. Yeah, didn't, yeah. Like, didn't let Brayden do, do much. Yeah, that's kind of what, like I had a, a specific plan and that's what I cared more about. Like the thing I cared the most about was fighting a particular way and that's where when other things that we didn't exactly plan for were sort of looking good, I would <laughs> steer away from them because like I, developmentally I had a couple of things that I needed to do. And so that's what I... That's how I approach it. Maybe that's stupid. Like, probably sounds stupid. It might be, but I I needed to had a little checklist of things that I wanted to sharpen up here, and that's how I approached it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, that was good. And then you're back again, eh? You know, pretty soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> well, it's like we'll wait till we're yeah. ready to go for that. I'll tell right. you soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. So, uh, also on this color. So, like, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll just go what's fresh on my brain from there. So we had uh. From PDJ Ibrahim, yeah, Abu the King, my favorite, yeah. yeah. Versus uh, Tom Cannon from Strike Force, and um, Ibrahim 
looked great. Like he, it's like he, he looked like he took, had pretty thorough control of that. Just fight. a little bit too smart. Mm. Just a little bit too smart. Cheeky, Get cheeky, he's cheeky. cheeky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got hot. Warren fell on the ropes. A couple <laughs> he times. does that. Hey. <laughs> Just a little elbow on the. Yeah, yeah he yeah. does that. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's cheeky. Slight. I like it. He's cheeky. Yeah, real female style, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, kick game was on point. The kick game is good. It's like, it's, it's, it's like you know, you draw Tom. I'm like for for I feel this fight, Tom. Tom looked at just like a bit flummoxed. Like yeah, it seemed like he, he's coming for you know. I knew what Tom wanted to do. He wanted to come in close, mm. really make it uh, gritty and things like that. But um, Ibby was just like nice, just drawing one kick, turn out or kick, block him off. Yeah, yeah, just like he just really controlled what what was going happening in the fight. Yeah. Tom has that real, like, it's all straight line kind of style, and that's a difficult matchup against Ibi because he is such a good fighter off the back foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, he was there. Ibi's left kick was good, real nice knees. Just, yeah, smart. Yeah. Didn't really break a sweat, just <laughs> his work. Yeah, he just did this. Yeah, we'll do this. Yeah, nice. Um, and, yeah, like, uh, as, as they've been kind of calling for, there's, like, arguably one of the best 57 kilo guys in, in Australia. Has to be, yeah. yeah. And then, like, you know, and... I really want to see that rematch, eh? Him versus Josh. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. Like, I don't know who else he really is. Like, I think Rocky's doing MMA now. Yeah, bro, a boxing MMA kind of Yeah, thing. so... I don't know who... I, and I honestly don't know who else there is, so... Yeah, not much at the moment. But, like, yeah, but, like, Abraham, looking class. Like yeah. It. So, see where me and Ibi go next, because we the always on this... We're always on the same <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> Queensland show Yeah as well. <laughs> we, The last time I fought in Sydney was, He was on the show as well Oh okay yeah. <laughs> We're yeah, always on the same oh, yeah, show yeah, <laughs> yeah Fair enough Alright um, Let me see I'll do a shout out This match from, I thought It was a really entertaining ma- match uh, Was it uh, uh, Jagger Khan um, Versus uh, Bryce Gibbs Yeah I didn't uh, see this, this is, uh, it, was, it was an entertaining little stouch Cause like uh Jago Chan, like, built from Splash Force, it seems to be kind of building a really good profile on yeah. himself from there. But, like, um, Bryce Gibbs in the first round absolutely floors him with a spinning elbow. On this, on this oh, side. yeah, I was listening to this. Yes. I think this was one fight before me. Yes. I and think the place kept before. going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. <laughs> but, like, you know, Jago got up and went the whole distance from there, and he ended up getting the decision in the end. And there's like, I think Bryce, like, I think in the end, probably just went to the well a little bit too many times. But, like, I'll give that, I'll give him that. Like, you know, just, it, like a kid from Lismore mm. from there, which is like not really known for its Muay Thai or anything like that. He gave it a fucking red hot go. Yeah. And he almost caught, caught lightning in a bottle that night yeah. as well. In that first round. Um, but I think that's probably a good fight for Jagger as, uh, as well in terms of like, you know, showing that he's durable, but how to kind of come back from something pretty mm. full on, like getting pretty soundly knocked down in the first round. But like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, let me see. What's another one? Oh, you see how uh, the, the big boys got it? I heard it. Same thing, <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> that was also that was a good one as well. Like, yeah, yeah, Jesse Astle. That Jesse Astle is scary, man. Jesus Christ. I wouldn't want to fight him. He's a brick of a dude. Yeah. And then, like, you see the guys fighting, like, uh, Jack Mianis. And then it's, like, two different body types. Stark physique difference, yeah. yeah. But, like, I'll give it to Jack. Like, you know, he got in there. He's a blue eye, yeah. He fucking went in there and just, like, had a, had a hot red hot crap. Yeah, he has a go. Mm. Eventually got stopped like uh, I think it was by an elbow. Got pretty like messed up with it, and yeah, and Jesse, you know, just went went to town on it a little bit from mm. there. But yeah, it was a good big boy bout. Uh, Jesse Astle, I think he's been having a lot of problems trying to find fights. I wonder can Jesse fight my boy Gun? Maybe I think there's a bit of an experience difference, but but yeah, I, mean, why not? It's like, I don't know if the weights line up either. Hmm. Um, I think they probably do. They both look massive to me. <laughs> <laughs> both big units. <laughs> Actually, like what I, I didn't mind like listening to his fights as well. Like, um, I think it was uh, Janet Inon was on the on the broadcast team. Yeah, with Hammer. Like, eh? He's good. I like him. He's, he's good. He's funny. Yeah. He's actually, he's, he's pretty funny. He's been I haven't heard him. insightful as well. He's not, not just a good looker, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be a good talker as well. But yeah, he was actually pretty good on the mic. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> I have to go back and watch yeah, some. Yeah, what was that? Um, so, uh, let's see. Ah, so uh, we had James Honey versus uh, Brown Pennis. Uh, man, James Honey, man. He's really hitting his stride. Yeah, he's he's, he's really, really hitting his stride. Like, I think... Dangerous dangerous person for any, anyone coming yeah, up. Yeah, like, he's very experienced. He's had 40-something fights or something. Uh, he wasn't always based at Strike Force. Uh, he had a couple years off at one point. Like, I think he's in, like, a... 
like a second coming. I don't know. Like mm. he really looks the goods. But you just kind of think that it just look like a like he's kind of just flipped the switch. It's just, it's just all clicking for him now. Yeah, he's a very complete fighter. He's got a good eye. He can play different games. Like mm. he can work off the very back well foot. Rounded. Yeah, he's durable too. I, I've seen. I feel like I've seen a couple of different James Honeys mm. in the time that I've been watching Muay Thai. But this one was. I was like, I don't know. I was watching this and like, this is something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon he's it, yeah, hitting uh, his stride. I don't know how to put it. I feel he's he's and he kind of rises to the challenge as well. Mm. Like you know, Brown Venice is like a very seasoned very, fighter. and but he get, but James came out with all the energy of basically. Taking dominance in this kind of fight. Yeah, he so went. He well. just yeah got on the front foot. Didn't show Brown any respect. Mm-hmm. Just got after it. Uh, yeah, I like I really like the angles he was working with his hands. Uh, yeah, I just I really liked it. I thought mm-hmm. this was a very like, I thought this was a very very impressive showing. Yeah, just like from, you know, if, if you from want sweet to, like, as honey, kind of party. This yeah. Was, this was it. yeah. It's like um, now he's he's lined up now for eruption mm. against Jay. Uh, the rematch. I like Jay. it a lot. Five rounder as well. I like it a lot. This is not a hard one to pick, man. It's hard. Like I don't know. I feel like if you were doing gambling odds for this, it'd probably be a, a, a pick and fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. This is a fight for the <coughs> number one spot in all that middleweight. Oh, most no most doubt. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Let's see. Interested it comes on top. And like I think. <laughs> Some big opportunities await the winner. I think two guys you could send overseas. Mm. I like it a lot. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. And mm. I think that does a breakdown of the War on the Shore show, <laughs> which is good to see. Everything that's going to get a mention from me. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but um, hopefully they do more shows in the, in the future as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know it's like PZ says he's like, you know, it's like apprehensive. <laughs> doing no, this. I love PZ. Understandable. I, um, I wanted to talk about the show. Yeah. It was sick. Like, it was so it good. good. Like, the whole uh, – I want to just take a minute to show my appreciation for Mr. C and PZ because they put on a class show. Like, it's – it's uh, I don't know if it's old-fashioned, but they brought back – you know, a lot of Muay Thai shows in Australia today are a lot more like that kind of grassroots kind of format, which is good. That's what we needed. But they brought back their show and they didn't – they, they didn't kind of fit the mold of what's more commonly like the venue was classy it was mm-hmm. packed as well uh it really felt like a ritzy kind of night out when you get there and all these little things they put us up in a nice hotel they uh had uh had there to drive us around so 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 good like the way they took i feel like it's one of those shows where like everyone would have thought on that been like yeah i want to go back and fight on that show again like it was wicked even the weigh-ins were super super nice like it yeah. felt like a like the weigh-ins were at the casino too and they had a real stage set up and and were live streaming it they, yeah everything was really really well put together uh i enjoyed this experience a lot cool nice yeah, hopefully they do some more yeah i want to get on that show no, it was <laughs> it's so like, sick. like everyone's taking like the like a insta stories you see the kind of thing you go, oh that guy it was so cool. sick yeah it has that kind of like you know like that almost like um, like a I guess for like a like an Australian uh, like high class boxing kind of fight. Yeah, it fight. felt like that. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, there's not that many shows no. like that, no, and that's not like you know the last two shows I fought on are like really really nice. Like the Melbourne Pavilion, mm-hmm. that's like real class, and and War on the Shore was similar to that. Like a really classy venue feels like an like it feels like an upscale show. Mm-hmm. Like you get there and you're like, whoa. <laughs> and then the the entrance <laughs> ramp is sick and and just the amount of like, you know, someone's showing you where to walk and and you know like the 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 staffing is a really important uh, thing. Yes. Is like yeah, and nothing was left up to chance. You in the right place at the right time and there's going to be a break after the like everything was communicated really well, ran really smoothly. Loved it. Nice. Excellent. Cool. Massive trophies. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I saw to get a trophy that big <laughs> back like, on the plane home? with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you fight into state and they give you, you know, like, shouldn't say that. Nah. Um, I can say <laughs> most of the time you don't have to worry about it because the Queenslanders don't lose. But um, <laughs> when you give the interstate the giant trophy, you're like, thank you, but how do I get this home? <laughs> 
It's like, a, oh man, I'm gonna have to ship this to myself. Yeah, <laughs> post it. <laughs> like most of my interstate trophies um, are in hotel lost property somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> this one it's came a, over. Yeah, this one came over. Hide them as far as this yeah. one. <laughs> All right, cool. And I guess that'll do us for the show this week. From there, yes. Plus, oh, that was a big catch up episode. That one. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got next? Is Yoko next? Um, Yoko's next, but a couple of weeks away. Yeah. That one. So like we'll probably cover that. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like we're doing commentary with us with some special guests as well. Yeah. Is that one like uh, Ching and uh, Andrew and <laughs> speaking of special <laughs> guests, I want chalk back on commentary. Oh yeah, that's a Chuck did. <laughs> How did Chuck go? I didn't hear yeah, it. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah, yeah he was really good. As long as he's not doing sign language, you know, on the <laughs> Nah, he was really good. Nice. Stay tuned for more pal and Chuck yeah, on need commentary. More, need more ties. Yeah. Doing commentary. There's enough out here, you know. Yeah. Get, get him on. There. Everyone's sick of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening to us. Uh, next couple of weeks, have yeah, more breakdowns. Um, got a whole heaps of guests. A lot of up. guests. Yeah, some really interesting guests as well from there. So I uh, keep tuning in for that. Other than that, guys. So remember, if you're watching YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. Um, Spotify, five, five stars. stars, five stars. Okay, Manscape. Use the discount code. Shave it's your the, balls. It's in the comments section. <laughs> okay, and um, we'll catch you next week. See ya. Peace.